Having trouble adapting to your environment? Well, we can't help you with that, but we have made the surprising discovery that the environment acts through nuclear RNAi to produce long-term behavioral changes in the free-living soil nematode C. elegans. We've discovered that nuclear RNAi um, occurs within the olfactory neurons of this organism and allows it to change its behavior to adapt appropriately to its environment. And small RNAs are actually the agents of nuclear RNAi. They are endogenously produced RNAs that are rather mysterious. They're not like the microRNAs or the pyRNAs that you might be familiar with. They're produced from mRNA, actually, and they can therefore target any gene in the genome. And what we found is that these small RNAs actually provide a memory of the animal's olfactory environment, allowing it to adapt to um, profitless odors in its environment. So C. elegans are innately attracted to a number of different odors. As you can see here in this movie, they're moving towards a point source of butanone. They're moving towards it as grad students might move towards free pizza. However, they're very smart. If you expose them to this same odor for one hour in the absence of food, they learn. They learn that these odors are not profitable. And so they will begin to ignore these odors. And this change in behavior is what we're really interested in. This change in behavior indicates a memory formation. And we would like to understand the molecular basis of this. What are the molecules that underlie these behaviors? We know from previous research that in a naive animal, odor 1, which is a guanocyclase producing CGMP, is required for the acute response to the odor. Equally important is that the CGMP-dependent protein kinase, EGL4, is in the cytoplasm. In the odor-adapted animals, however, odor 1 needs to be downregulated or adaptation will not occur. Importantly as well is that EGL4 enters the nucleus. What it does there is a mystery that Dr. Zhuang decided to follow. I tested all the RNAi defective mutants for those that were also adaptation defective. And I found that the nuclear RNA defective mutants could not adapt to butanol. In association with Dr. Scott Kennedy, the team found that the 22 gRNA associated protein, NERDI3, binds small endogenous RNA encoded by the odor 1 gene. This 22 gRNA is likely to be amplified from the odor 1 mRNA itself. The team found increased levels of odor 1 22G in odor adapted animals. Once NERDI3 binds its 22 gRNA cargo, it shuttles into the nucleus where it associates with the NERDI complex, and the complex locates to the nascent strand. The repressive histone H3 lysine 9 trimethyl marks are loaded onto the targeted locus. We found that in odor adaptation, the H3K9 methyl binding protein, HPL2, was loaded onto the odor 1 locus, and we found that the odor 1 mRNA was much reduced. Interestingly, we also discovered that HPL2 is a direct phosphorylation target of EGL4, and that phosphorylation of HPL2 is both necessary and sufficient to promote odor adaptation. The following model emerges from this work. Endogenously produced small RNAs act in the olfactory neuron by engaging nuclear RNAi. This leads to repression of a gene that is required for both odor sensation and whose repression is required for odor adaptation. Odor acts on this pathway via a kinase that amplifies the RNAi signal. This allows an environmental stimulus to downregulate potentially any gene that produces a 22G RNA. Thus, any gene may sow the seeds of its own inactivation under the right circumstances. The small RNAs may be agents of memory. <laughs>